uh, I need to, I'm trying. I need to finish it in 12 minutes. That's what I'm trying. Just a trial video. Anyway. Hello everyone, welcome uh, to my presentation. As you can see, uh, my presentation is about stock market prediction. I mean, uh, prediction of stock prices, right? And this paper used uh, ensemble, ensemble of multiple approaches, right? Graph theory, machine learning, and deep learning uh, models. I predicted that stock prices. So this is site. Now, what is the problem that your this paper has addressed? So you know about efficient market hypothesis, the cornerstone of modern financial theory. What does it say? It says at any point, my stock has the fair value considering all the different uh, variables. And you cannot predict the stock prices depending on some trend, technical analysis, or fundamental analysis. Some will add consistently. However, opponents, they believe sometimes stock market deviate from their fair value, and it is possible to beat the stock market. Okay, maybe both of them are right, depending on the context. So we always predict the price of stocks. What we usually do? We usually select one stock or couple of stocks and we predict the stock market price for a particular time interval, right? And how to use. In general, we use statistics and machine learning, right? Statistics and machine learning. Now, what this paper has done, this paper has done, just went a little beyond than this, right? And they used graph theory and spatio-temporal relationship among the stocks. What is that, right? So graph theory means the stock market, the interactions among the stocks, they represent it as a graph. And then they find out the spatial space dependency when you represent the graph, the space, uh, special relationship among them, and the time interval relationship on their historical stock prices. They utilize those things. And then they predicted the stock prices. What is the outcome? Uh, yes, they found a better prediction accuracy. Now, why? They're thinking because they considered the structural information special information that will help them receive this goal. So which stock market data set they use? Fortune 500 companies, the top 30, and they took stock market prices, one day interval and one minute interval and one million financial news they used. What are the different ways people do uh, stock market prediction? These are some of the names, ARIMA, LSTM, RNN, SVM. Yeah, in some cases, SVM work well, also better than ANN. However, LSTM usually worked better. Now, what these do? They usually model one stock at a time and predict uh, the prices for one stock at a time. And these are indep independent models. They do not consider the interaction among these different stocks and this models that's the limitations now what does this paper do this paper consider the relations among those stocks in the corresponding model and they propose two different model one is cnn based deep learning network and another is traditional machine learning based linear regression model so these two and they claim that both of these methods have achieved performance more than the traditional approaches. Now, 
how did they do it? As you told, the core idea is we'll be creating graphs using those stocks and their correlations. Correlations in their prices. So we create four uh, two types of graph, right? Two types of graph. One thing is correlation, how they are correlated. And another is relation, but it's relation in the financial news articles, whether they have been uh, mentioned in the same article or not. That is considered to be a relation. That is the causation based relationship. They create uh, different graphs. So you can see there are, there are four different uh, graphs. So what are these graphs? So the first one is yes, each node represents the stock. And whether there is an age or not, that depends on how correlated they are. They use Pearson correlation, Spearman correlation, and Kendall Tau correlation. If the Pearson correlation is greater than 0.5, they create an edge, Spearman 0.4, and for Kendall Tau, 0.3. Spearman is it's about the linear relationship. No, Pearson, linear, linear relationship among the stocks, correlations, and Spearman and Kendall, they sort of uh, track the non-linear correlation. And the number fourth graph, that is the news convention. If one article mentions two stocks or three stocks, we create edge between those and we put a weight one. If another article mentions two of them, we create one another edge, means we just increase the weight. So uh, that's how the uh, position uh, graph is being uh, formed, right? Now, how their graph model works. This graph model, how they work. Okay, actually there's one another matrix that is a feature matrix. Feature matrix, it is the X in the picture. You can see it is the X that is the um, feature matrix or stock market price. It's a, a data set. It's, it's a, a, a time series data set and they say it a uh, vector for a particular uh, node or stock, right? And what is the overall architecture? Overall, they, they have used multiple layers, multiple blocks. For each block, what we have? We have graph convolutional networks that is dependent of convolutional layers of graph structure, right? And the CNN is the convolutional neural network and there are multiple steps. The picture A that you can see the graph structure mentioned in a adjacency matrix. So it passed this adjacency matrix and this feature matrix and graph convolutional neural network. It learns the spatial dependency among these stocks. And CNN, it learns the temporal or time dependency in the stock market prices. So that's how the relationship is being studied. And these are combined together and sent to the next layer. And at the final, we have the multi-layer perceptron that uses some sort of linear transformation and predict the stock market prices for each individual node or stock level. That's how things work. Now, that was the uh, deep neural network architecture. They also used one uh, linear regression model. Linear regression model, what they did? The graph, they created some community using Nubian community algorithm. And then they used two models, single model and the composite. But in single model, the representative stock with highest degree, they use some linear regression model, pass it there and predict the price. On the composite model, they collect features for all the stocks in the uh, community and create this feature matrix 22 multiplication uh, number of nodes in a community for each uh, stock time period 22 uh, features they collect so they pass it to the composite model composite linear regression and they predict the uh, stock price right now what is the performance in terms of performance before i go to the details of the performance i want to rank rank which one perform better? Usually, the uh, financial news-based graph that perform the best, 
and then usually Kendall Tau based graph convolutional network that perform the second best, and the uh, Spearman based graph convolutional network that there is the th third best, and then Pearson and the linear model, and then the addition of other approaches, right? Now, this performance, how did they measure? They use matrix, matrix like MARS RMSC, root mean square error in prediction, and then mean absolute percentage error and mean absolute error. These are the matrix calculation they used usually. The lower the value, the better prediction they have made. Now, this is three time step ahead prediction of a stock prices. You can see all the different things are there. The four different graphs, new space graph, candle, spearman. Okay. It's the anima statistical model. This is also their graph based single community model and composite community model. We go here, you can see the RMSC is almost the lowest. And this mean absolute percentage error, it may not be the lowest, but second lowest, I will say. And this probably is also the among the US, so we can see that position part from the best. We can see this. And I want single and composite. Okay. The composite one perform better in terms of RMC. So you can see six time steps and nine time steps, they almost perform the similar, right? Now, what is the limitation of their work? Uh, in terms of limitations, they are approach may suffer from exploding gradient problem. What does it mean? The nodes with higher degree will get larger values in the convolutional feature representations and lower degree nodes will get lower values and gradient accumulates or vanishes. So that can affect the performance. Okay, so what can be the future work? We can uh, improve this and apply to bigger nodes, you can take it to a uh, general time series, this approach for the forecasting problem. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Yeah, it actually almost will meet when I started on my alarm clock. Timer, yeah, I think starting and ending, it's 12 minutes. There are some before and after.